Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking about how we give our students a variety of different learning experiences. So about 10 years ago I discovered Tarsia puzzles. Now in case you haven't heard of what Tarsia puzzles are, they're basically um, these, it's a free software and you can put math questions on um, different jigsaw pieces. So basically students put together the jigsaw pieces and the sides of each jigsaw piece is either a question or an answer. So sometimes you have triangles that make up this huge hexagon or triangles that make up a huge uh, triangle. And so when I discovered this, I thought, wow, what a wonderful collaborative strategy that I could use. And what ended up happening was I was so excited about this new thing, I overused it and used it probably for the next solid two to three weeks in all of my lessons. And as soon as I came in on the third week of my lesson, still using these Tarsia puzzles, you know, the students, I got at the Tazi puzzle and the students just rolled their eyes and went, no, oh, not again. I don't want to do this. This is boring. And so the lesson that I actually learned was that we need to give our students a variety of different learning experiences so that they're not bored and they don't know what to expect um, all the time. Um, here are some examples of different learning experiences that I think would actually captivate students a little bit more. So in terms of technology, we've got either a graphical display calculator or we have free online software, which includes GeoGebra, Desmos, and there's a lot of wonderful online community built resources for GeoGebra and Desmos. But again, I wouldn't say overuse those two. Don't always use them in every single classroom. Um, um, a very another really common popular I think learning experience is to give students some kind of stimulus and then ask them what they see think wonder and I think this is a wonderful thinking routine to really help to I think structure student thinking and then to generate student-led inquiry questions through what they wonder so see think wonder is this wonderful routine but again, I wouldn't use it in every single lesson because then your students will know what to expect. And I think the three um, act math lessons are also wonderful and you can combine the three act math lessons with the see, think, wonder routine. Now, some up, so to give some other examples of learning experiences, um, we could also give our students a web quest. And so let's say that um, you wanted your students to learn about proof by induction. I have um, an example of a web quest for this linked below. So have a take a look. Uh, I've put some resources. There's a lot of scaffolding. It's not about just saying to students, go and find out about proof by induction, but really carefully giving resources, prompts and scaffolds and questions so that you're actually guiding your students thinking and understanding ultimately. What are some other examples? So we also have authentic performance assessment tasks and I think these are an absolutely wonderful way for students to be able to see the mathematics in a context but allows them to take on a role, to actually have an audience, to be able to look at different formats of how they're going to demonstrate their understanding. In the concept-based classroom, even though we adopted inquiry, inductive teaching approach, we actually still do adopt explicit or direct instruction for low order facts and skills if students need it. So as an example, I would not be asking my students to inquire into vocabulary words. Vocabulary words and spelling is low order and just requires some rote memorization. So it's so it is okay to actually tell our students what vocabulary is. That is actually not good use of inquiry. Use of inquiry is actually used to help students arrive at deep conceptual understandings. So we can deliver the facts and skills, but we want to elicit those deep conceptual understandings from our students through an inquiry inductive teaching approach. In my next video, I'll explain more about the inquiry inductive teaching approach. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button below if you want to keep up to date with my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Bye.